Hey everybody, welcome to my Pete and Pole Air Camper slash RV7 YouTube video channel. Thanks for stopping by, I appreciate it. If you've been here before and you've looked at some of the other videos, you've probably noticed the long, boring uh, introduction at the beginning of each one. I am redoing that now. I just want to cut it down, keep it nice and short and sweet and to the point. So again, welcome. Uh, one thing I also wanted to make note of is I'm going to include uh, some contact information for those who have questions and uh, would potentially like some help with their project. Um, haters, don't waste your time. I am Johnny on the spot with the delete button and I will delete your email post haste and not even read it. So don't waste my time. Don't waste yours. Uh, anybody else looking for some help, advice, have questions, concerns, whatever, you'll now be able to contact me directly. Um, I'm quite regular on email, um, so I should be able to get a response to you relatively quick. I've got a ton of photographs for both aircraft, so if, if you need some clarification on something, chances are I've got detailed photographs and I'll be able to help you out. Let's see, other than that, uh, I think that's it. I'm going to keep this short. Um, oh. Again, if, uh, if, if you like what you see and uh, you want to help me out uh, to get through my RV7 build project, uh, you can visit my GoFundMe. Just do a search for Caretaker Arrow. That's Caretaker with a K. I also have a, um, an Amazon wish list. There's some pieces, parts in there that I could use. Again, if you feel moved enough to help me out, it'd be greatly appreciated. Or if you want to just contact me directly, um, you know, we can, we can talk about whatever, and um, so I'll just leave it at that. Anyway, thanks for coming by. I appreciate it, and uh, again, hopefully you'll find these videos worth your time, and um, that's that. So let's get back to building, and I am now going to shut up, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Hey, everybody. I just wanted to do some filming outside real quick give you an idea of the weather today. It, today is March 31st, 2019 and uh, up here in Ohio we got uh, obviously we got some snow overnight so this is uh, the morning of the 31st this is the, the backyard of uh, Caretaker Arrow. I personally love the snow I am actually not a fan of spring and summer for various reasons but so this is a very nice surprise for me. Um, I kind of knew it was coming, but I didn't think we'd get quite this much. Um, it's, it's not a lot. Uh, we've only got about five inches or so. But anyway, it's never enough for me. We never get enough snow, uh, in my opinion. Let me go over here to another window, give you another view. See, this, this screen here has got a bunch of snow on it, so I don't know how much you'll be able to see through it. Let me go up here. I'm sorry for the shaking, but I've got my arms stretched out so I can get up above the snow that's stuck on the screen. So, anywho, it's uh, still coming down just a little bit, not that much. But uh, being at the end of March, tomorrow will be April 1st. Uh, I don't think this is going to last very long. Matter of fact, for all I know, it could be gone by the end of today. Anyway, that's it. This is uh, this is the view out the, uh, the back windows of Caretaker Arrow, March 31st, 2019. A little bit of snow makes my day quite nice, and uh, I'll get to filming some uh, some RV stuff because I'm sure you guys weren't here for an Ohio weather report. All right, I'll talk to you soon. I decided on my fuel system. I decided to use the uh, the standard Vans float type of fuel sender. I am not doing a flop tube. However, I am going to do the uh, these little flapper doors, if you will, for the uh, last bay within the fuel tank. So, if you can imagine, the the end of the fuel tank is where the the lower end of the fuel tank is where the fuel drain is located and this is the second rib in the fuel tank 
and it has as an option these these little doors and if you're doing a uh, inverted fuel system you would have the flop tube as your fuel intake that is also within this bay area this basically allows fuel to flow from the rest of the tank into this bay where the fuel pickup is located this door in theory prevents fuel from running back out through this hole here. Now, of course, if your fuel level is higher than this, fuel's gonna bleed in and out of here regardless. But once your fuel level gets below this level here, the only way that it's gonna get into this bay area where the fuel pickup is located is through here and possibly through this corner. But like I said, I am not doing a fuel flop. I'm just using the standard hard uh, fuel pickup tube. But I like this idea just because um, regardless of what kind of fuel pickup you have in your tank, you want to keep as much fuel in that bay as you can. And so I, I like the idea of having this door. So here real quick is how I made mine. Very simple. It's just a piece of hinge, and um, I countersunk the door and the hinge for these uh, flush rivets to sit flush here. Riveted on half of the rivet or half of the uh, hinge. Now the top hinge, you can see this divot or this this. Uh, well, what do I want to call this? This this press reinforcement type of stiffener. So the hinge can't really rivet into that. You needed a nice flat surface to rivet this on. So all I did was position my assembly where I wanted it and I just put a couple of holes in the hinge on this flat area. I didn't even concern myself with this. So that's all I needed was two little holes for the rivets located on this flat area, just like that. This part of the hinge obviously does nothing. If I wanted to, I could cut this ear off, this, this corner of the hinge here. I could cut that off, but I didn't do it on my other tank. I'm not going to worry about it on this tank. I'm just going to set this on here where I want it positioned, mark these two holes drill the holes here and go ahead and rivet it in place. Another thing I wanted to point out, and, and again it's not really that big of a deal, but you have this material of the door underneath this hinge. So I don't know if I can demonstrate this very well. Let me see. So if this is laying on a flat surface, in theory since you have this thickness of material under the hinge, you should have that same thickness, thickness of material under this side of the hinge as well because when you rivet this down, that's going to that's gonna make this lift up. And of course now you have a leak point underneath. With this being so thin, that really does not play much of a role. And you can see a little bit there when I press on this hinge, it lifts this door. Now is that going to matter when your rib is upright in the flying position? Maybe. You can feel it when you do it this way. You can see how it lifts that door up out of the way. So again, I don't know if it's that important, but in my mind it was important enough that I just went ahead and made, out of the same thickness of material, same thickness material as this. I just made a little spacer and this will fit underneath this side of the hinge so that this hinge, this side of the hinge and this side of the hinge are on the same plane and when you do that now you don't get that lifting. This will always lay flat against here. 
and that's it. And then uh, the the hinge itself is made directly from the plans. This this size of the door is made to plans, and I put this little kick here. That way, the the door has a stop. It has a stop here. It, it can't come all the way up and then stay there and and not cover up the hole. So that's my door. So I'll fit this on. I'll locate it where I want it to be. And then I'll go ahead and drill these holes, make sure I get my shim in there, and rivet it. Done. The last thing that I'll do then is pull this pin out and put a bend in it. Put the pin back in, and then when you put your baffle on, the hinge pin is trapped. That's that. That's the, uh, that's the little flapper door. Hello again everybody and as usual thanks for coming by. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it worthy and uh, again as always hopefully you found something that was uh, worth your time. So thanks again for stopping by and again making this short and sweet. Um, I've got contact information available now so if you feel the need to uh, help me out with my RV7 project uh, feel free to email me or you can go to my GoFundMe, as I said in the beginning, at, uh, just do a search for Caretaker Arrow. That's Caretaker with a K. And again, I've got the uh, Amazon uh, wish list. And uh, for you RV7 guys and girls out there, if, uh, if you watch these videos and are moved to uh, purchase an RV kit of your own, if you'd include my build number with your first order, Vans will uh, give me a hundred bucks. Um, it's kind of like a referral, I guess. So uh, if you were to do that, I would greatly appreciate it. It's no money out of, out of your pocket. It's just something Vans does as an incentive. So as I said, if you decide to build and you order your first kit, if you would include my builder number, I'd appreciate it. And all this contact information will be in the description of each video. So check out the description and uh, do what you feel you need to do and uh, I would appreciate any help and again if you need some further assistance contact me I've got photographs I've got videos we can communicate directly and uh, hopefully I can give you some further guidance if you want it so that's it again thanks for stopping by come back uh, frequently I try to do a video or two um, every week if I can so uh, subscribe keep coming back and uh, I will talk to you again soon. All right, thanks.